Alright, hello everyone. So this one is for the egos in general. This one I don't really need to explain a lot of things I feel because there's really not a lot of egos that I need to talk about. So first off, let's talk about the ones that are actually going to be leaving soon. We got Regret Basalt. Regret Basalt is king of egos right now because literally adding two coin power to all of your moves is crazy. It makes any ID of Basalt into an insanely good ID. Like, your Rhino Assault used to be okay at like one-sided attacking and his skill tree was pretty damn good because he rolled up to 21. And then now you slap on this regret, just pop it whenever you want and now your skill tree pretty much is kind of like a rip space. It's actually crazy how much power you can slap onto a lot of these Assaults with a lot of coins. Even your W Assault gets so much power from this one. He actually does rip space. He actually does that with this one ego. Doesn't even matter that it doesn't even like do anything related to what that ID is doing. It, this thing technically does burst tremor, but screw that. Koi power plus two, lol. Like, yeah, this is a game changer for all IDs of Assault, and I'm pretty sure all Assaults from now on need to be balanced around this ego. Otherwise, they actually become even more insane. So if they ever release a Assault with another 4 coin move and actual okay numbers, that guy is going to get ascended by this ego here. Pretty much similar to W Assault, he also has a 4 coin move on his skill tree. So yeah, very very crazy ego. Definitely a winner in Walpurgis Knight. You will notice Walpurgis Knight units are always like up here. It's because they are actually up there. It, they do a lot of good things for whatever uh, you, uh, whatever uh, team comp you want to bring them in. They're just very, very good and very, very versatile. Right, Soda, Soda. The Sodas are honestly not worth the resources it takes to use them. You'd rather use those resources elsewhere. I'm pretty sure this one is just a heal. Sometimes healing, sometimes SP healing, sometimes a little bit of both. Doesn't really matter because doesn't, like, it doesn't even give that much value. It does do a nice 3 AoE, but you need to pay so much resource, you might as well save up for a 7 AoE or a better 3 AoE down here. So don't really need to talk about these sodas that much. They are pretty much just kind of, eh, like, eh, it's not that great. Dimension Shredder. So Dimension Shredder Yi Sang here is actually about to get his ID. And his ID is already looking very, very synergistic with this ego here and I'm very excited about the synergies between the two of them. This ego already hits very hard, having a 30 something coin and it also does pride damage twice in that he does pride damage on his on hit and he also pr does pride damage because the ego is literally an element of pride. So yeah, it is very hard hitting if the enemy is weak to pride and it's about to get its ID and the ID is about to support Rupture Count and this also supports Rupture Count very heavily. So because of that, right, this Ego is, might pop off for when that ID is released. Gonna have to wait for W uh, Yi Sang's uh, actual like coinage and all the numbers to drop first before we judge that. But for now, we'll put him here. And when the ID is released, we'll just talk about whether the Dimension Shredder is actually going to be still very good or not. Dimension Shredder Hong Lu pretty much goes with K-Corp Hong Lu. They are, it's able to make him have another no die move. And also uh, K-Corp Hong Lu pretty much charges it as well as uh, K-Corp Hong Lu gets very good coinages if he attacks someone with Rupture. So he is also Rupture Synergy and this also applies even more Dimension Shredder, uh, sorry, Dimensional Rift stacks. So it's just very, very good synergies. Finally, the two of them have their IDs attached. So this is going to be very exciting for future Rupture teams. I can't wait to see what numbers W Yi Sang will get after this. Red Eyes and Red Eyes Open. Kind of not so great because you have to use both Egos within like uh, after using this one. You need to apply Bind in order to get bonus damage from Red Eyes Open. So you need to use this followed by this. But actually when you think about it, 4th Match Flame is pretty much uh, a huge amount of damage and a very good buff and you only need to use it once compared to just using this followed by this. So because of that, I don't really think that these are worthy to be sparked. At first I thought they were going to be quite interesting but then when I think about it more, 4th Mesh Flame Ryoshu is actually uh, pretty much just this but in one ego instead. 
also has a bonus effect of giving you a very strong passive every time you take four actions. So ultimately, this is just not very interesting anymore to me. This one does give you a little bit of sustain, but there are other sustain egos. And this one is just very good for binding, but there are also other bind sources. So unfortunately, I don't think I want to recommend this ego at all. And I mean, the good news is that, of course, uh, you can run one of them because it's not going to fight with Ryoshu for the slot, but one of them does fight with Ryoshu for the slot. So it's a bit tough. Uh, sorry, 4th match flame Ryoshu for the slot. Right, so these two, I don't think they're actually a very interesting priority, but uh, when they were released, I thought they were going to be very good, and now they're not that great anymore, in my opinion. Right, so some of the very important egos are coming back, so Season 2 players rejoice. Fluid Sack Faust is coming back, and everyone knows that this is the healing ego and the SP healing ego of this season. Literally, if you don't have this, right, you will feel how bad it is to have all of your units be low HP and low SP most of the time. Because this ego here pretty much can fuel all other egos. It is so incredibly strong. Very, very powerful ego indeed. Besides its huge amount of AoE, it provides healing and it also it, uh, provides enough SP if you roll heads on it that it will actually restore all the SP that you just used to activate it. So Fluid Sack Foul Spam is legit and is very powerful and is very convenient for all content in the game. Sun Shower Yi Sang, comboed with uh, Spice Bush Yi Sang, I talked about this one before in the ID one. It is a very, very powerful combo because it provides loss damage up for your Otis, for your Dichi, for your Spice Bush Yi Sang. So all of those get a buff and Spice Bush Yi Sang also buffs Sun Shower Yi Sang. So too synergistic honestly, it's too synergistic. It just does so much damage and it actually is way stronger than Ebony Stem. In fact, I'm pretty sure these are both piercing egos as well. It's just that Ebony Stem is a gluttony ego, also hits 7 target, and unfortunately, it's a little bit power crept by this one in terms of the damage. This rolls 30 something, this rolls about 20 something. So, unfortunately, this kind of get power crept by this, but against a bunch of enemies that are weak to gluttony, this actually will beat this in the damage. Next, 4th match Flame Ryoshu. 4th match Flame Ryoshu, every 4th attack, you will get a bonus and you have a very powerful coinage in a triple AoE slash. So just generally a very good ego to be pulling, or uh, sorry, not pulling, uh, uh, dispensing when she comes back. Next, we got Kapot Masol. Kapot Masol is from this uh, season's banner, and he will be sparkable for those who did not complete their battle pass. So Kapot Masol is pretty much a very hard hitting ego. It rolls up to 45 coin, and it is a single target hit. So, if you are ever fighting anything that you straight up cannot win, just pop this ego and beat the shit out of it because 45 will win every coin in the game currently. In addition to that, it also provides a little bit of wrath damage and has some fire synergy as well, so it can be slapped onto your Liu Assault for future burn teams perhaps. Right now, I think burn is still not in the best place and I think it needs a bit more support. Hopefully, the next season will introduce more burn support so that we can actually see them pop off. Next, Rhymeshank Rodion goes very very well with Dichi Rodion because Dichi Rodion wants to get a lot of sinking onto targets and Rhymeshank Rodion will provide that and also provides a lot of extra damage and is very easily charged by Dichi as well as uh, Rose Banner Rodion because they both provide NV as well as Gloom. So just a very very powerful ego. I would highly recommend if you ever want to try going for any sinking teams because this amount of count that it, and uh, potency that they apply is very very high for what it is going to cost, especially since Gloom and Envy are literally some of the most common elements in our game because all the W Corps use it and you will very easily find people to generate that resource for you. Ledger Domain, formerly the king of the previous uh, season, is unfortunately not as amazing in the current season. And the reason for that is that his uptight 4 doesn't really give him anything else interesting. While a lot of units became AoE, a lot of these egos right, used to be single target, and then they became AoE with the introduction of uptight 4. And so because of that, right, his blunt AoE is not exactly something to, uh, to be... I mean, it's good to spam, but at the same time, you might as well save up for a big AoE that will do a crap ton of damage. To a lot of targets. Not to say that he's fallen off that much to be honest because sometimes you might want to just keep spamming this AoE just to win clashes for free or just to do a little bit more blunt damage or maybe to apply paralyze. 
lots of good options for using Legend Domain still, so it still is quite viable in the current meta, just not exactly uh, as busted as he was in Season 1, mostly because back then there wasn't really much to compare to. But now with the new Egos coming out, there's honestly quite a few options instead of just spamming it. But it is still very cheap, so it still has the advantage of being only 4 costs for an AoE. Very, very powerful ego. ADD Gang. So, ADD Greco is a support uh, charge count ego. It uh, provides a debuff onto an enemy, and then you'll be able to hit it to get some charge count. Not so interesting when you consider how powerful the uptie 4 was for a lot of the charge count characters. They were able to increase their charge count gains which helped them become more consistent. Uh, Reindeer got a huge glow up and is able to pretty much charge her mind weight really fast. Teleport Dawn is also a good assistant for charging up other characters and also we got some other IDs who can provide a little bit of charge count to their allies. So this debuff is not exactly super necessary. It's just okay to have but not really uh, something to uh, spark for in my opinion. Then ADD, ADD uh, Heathcliff is a no die move for Heathcliff and really I can only think of Sun Shower Heathcliff as a possible option uh, for use. The reason why is because it uh, Sun Shower Heathcliff will be getting smacked a lot. To be honest, uh, Yasunyata Heathcliff was released quite recently and Yasunyata Heathcliff is pretty much right, uh, pretty much meant for Sun Shower uh, Heathcliff. Because this provides sustain as well as whenever uh, Sun Shower Heathcliff is about to be staggered, he will get an additional 15% max HP and he will be healed based on the new max HP that he just got. So quite interesting that they released this just for Sun Shower. Then this ADD kind of feels like it got dropped somewhere along the line. So uh, ADD kind of okay. There's not really any charge count related characters for Heathcliff. So this thing doesn't really have any particularly interesting effects besides the no die move. Right, so Yasunyata is, I just explained it, it's basically uh, an Ego 4 uh, Sun Shower Heathcliff. It has a threshold for plus 15 SP and it has a threshold for minus 15 SP. It's pretty similar to how Sun Shower fluctuates between either high or low SP. And then you'll be able to get some AoEs depending on which one. And uh, the most important part is the passive, which helps to heal you whenever you get staggered. So you will be able to keep functioning even though you have been just staggered. So honestly, that guy is going to take quite a few hits. So this is a good thing to have. Next, Kapot Ishmael. Kapot Ishmael is kind of whatever. So for reference, if I can't even remember what this ego does. That's why I have to always refer to it in my sidebar. So for Kapot Ishmael, right, she does a 2 AoE, applies 1 ref damage up to all allies next turn, inflicts 4 burn and also makes the target lose 15 SP. If you corrode it, you get one Wrath Fetch and one Wrath Damage to all units next turn. And then you get all of this and you also Burst Tremor. The main thing here is probably just this passive. Take note that this becomes attack weight of 4, so it is actually going to hit quite hard. Problem is Ishmael doesn't really have a negative coin ego, so it's probably going to just do 20 in a 4 AoE. And with 20 in a 4 AoE, you might as well just fluid sack or something like that. When attacking a target with less than 30% HP, ref skills deal plus 20% damage. So yeah, this is pretty much kind of meant to synergize with Liu Ishmael because she's the only one that can take off with a very powerful ref skill and sometimes you'll be able to get this effect but it's still a little bit wonky that it's only triggering at less than 30% HP. If it was less than 50%, it would be a lot better, but 30% is like, I don't know, man. Maybe on bosses who are very thick, this could be okay, because maybe like around the 400 HP mark, you might start doing more damage to them. But besides that, I really don't see a use for this one, especially when other Blossom Star is another available ego for uh, Ishmael. So I do not know what to feel about this one. I just kind of throw it here as uh, one of the coming back ones. Sun Shower Otis, still wonky, uh, but good coins. So if you look at Sun Shower Otis, pretty much you have uh, 26 plus 7, so 30 something coin in attack weight of 2, so good coins. The problem is that this ego, right, kind of does poise count stuff, and also inflicts sinking, inflicts bind, burst tremor as well, and then inflicts tree sinking count. It's like it does literally everything, and I have no clue what it's supposed to be used for. After a clash, you gain 2 points when staggered. 
and then you gain two oh sorry after clash you gain two points this is probably the main one that you're looking at when you look at this ego so it technically makes any of otis's ids into a crit character and i'm thinking with the release of uh molar otis this could be the one to be used with her because when you win a clash you gain two poise and she has a very powerful uh, indiscriminate attack now that could be quite interesting in addition to that she also gains seven poise count here so because of all of that right i'm inclined to believe that you just kind of slap this onto mola otis and you kind of get a crit character seven crits and then you win a bunch of clashes and you get a bunch of poise all right and then after that, getting staggered, whatever, honestly. You do want to get staggered with Mola Otis, so I really don't know. But this Ego has some pretty good clashing power. It has some good AUE, at least it's 2, right? So that's actually not so bad. And the fact that it also gives uh, 2 points whenever you win a clash. Now that is quite okay, I guess. Slowly but surely, you will get enough uh, poise potency so that you will eventually crit. So yeah, it's a bit wonky. I don't know if it's actually worth popping resources for, but 37 is actually not a bad number at all. Yeah, yeah. Th sorry, not 37, 34. Yeah, that's a pretty good number. So I think it actually is quite okay, but I probably wouldn't spark for it, especially not when Ebony Stem is coming out at the same time as it. Because Ebony Stem is a pretty powerful, impactful one that you will actually save up for. And Sun Shower Otis is something that you don't want to really waste a turn to use, in my opinion. Compared to like what other Blossom Star, you use it once, good stuff. Rhyme Shang, use it once, good stuff. Fluid Sack, use it, use it. This one, don't even need to use it. Like You use it multiple times, you don't even need to use it once, right? Uh, Dimension Shredder, use once, then it's very good. It's like, if your ego is not turn efficient, I'd rather not use you. And it's also not very interesting for any other synergy comps. So also not very fun looking. So yeah, don't know. You want to get beat Masult, unfortunately just got absolutely destroyed by Regret Masult. Uh, they, they share the same slots, so Regret literally will always kick out you want to get beat from his slot. I think they are Tef Egos. Because Regret gives literal coin power, and this gives damage dealt in exchange for max HP. This is actually, coin power is also damage. So this is straight up just going to probably do more damage on average and you only need to use it one time. You need to use this one multiple times. So in terms of resource usage, this one also wins overall. So this just got power crept L for this guy. Lifetime still, I never ever found a use for this. Even though we now have seven team members on our party, Lifetime still usage is kind of wonky because you will need to get a tail hit to, so that you can hit all of your allies and then all of them get the resource buff and then you get a bunch of resources back. That is the idea of this ego. The problem is it's also not turn efficient. You have to spend one turn to do it. So you will need to just do this whenever you want to build up a bunch of resources, which I can only think of MD2 hard as one of the places you want to do this instead of Refraction Railway. So in terms of turns, it is not very good to spend one turn of doing this instead of using one turn of Ninkles Unga Bunga. Yeah, so still, yeah, I'm done coping with this. It's definitely just lol tier right now. I don't recommend anyone get it until, I don't know, some genius decides to uh, find out like how far can we take this lifetime to and then we discover that this thing is actually broken or something like that. But for now, I really cannot justify pulling this one. Right, so I think that is it for all of my opinions for this tier list. Everything else here, oh, okay, I guess I guess Lantern is also here, but Lantern is an infinite one, so... I really don't know. I didn't want to talk about a lot of these because they were from Season 1. But Lantern is technically Season 2, so let's just take a look at Lantern. Right, so Lantern, where do you go? Lantern rolls, let's see. Lantern rolls at 18 plus 6 of 24 in a 3 AoE, very similar to Lantern Gregor. At less than 50% HP, attack rate plus 2. Maybe there's going to be an ID that wants to function at this. Maybe she, uh, Sinclair? Because getting this 50% is not exactly easy on a character that will just keep winning his clashes, like Din Claire, for example. In exchange for that, you get a 5 AoE, that's pretty nice, and then you also heal 2 allies. But you don't really need this healing because there are better options. If you corrode it, you get target that unit with the most HP. At 50% HP, attack weight plus 2, gaining 5 AoE, and then you also inflict rupture count, inflict defense down, and you heal yourself. After defeating enemy that mainly targets this unit, heal 3% of max HP. Hmm. 
a very situational passive because you need to kill someone that targeted you. Although it's a mainly target as well. So this one is really tricky. You need to defeat them. This is a very harsh requirement. So this is a bit hard. And besides that, you still need to get to 50% or less and 50% or less here. As well as it's a he ego. Uh, in terms of he ego, right? This thing doesn't really clash with any of uh, Sinclair's egos. The rest of them are Tef, so they're just fighting each other and depending they wins almost all the time. So Lantern can just exist if you were to get it. The problem is that I don't see you ever using resources to pop this. Doesn't have any interesting synergies, doesn't do really anything for any status. So doesn't really uh, fit well with me. I think this is actually just a waste of resources. Unless you really need a healing source, in which case uh, this might be a very copium healing source. Pursuance does 30% and Fluid Sack Faustus 15% to all. So that difference right there makes it so that this ego might be just here as well. Because I don't see you ever ever using this, not gonna lie. Maybe if you have no other choice but you need this healing, then you might consider this. But Pursuance is a forever, I, a forever ego. So you can just go and get that instead and run Masalt if you need a healer. And Masalt has Rhino and also Regret. Uh, yeah, I think Regret doesn't even share the same style as Pursuance. This is a He Ego, Regret is a Tef Ego. So yeah, this is just straight up. Pursuance is just better than this one, straight up for healing. Lantern doesn't really do anything much for the Ninclair or any of the other Sinclairs if I think about it. Maybe if a new ID comes out that pairs with this, it could be good. Otherwise, it's not very good. Okay, so that is just my thoughts on all of the egos. Not gonna go super in depth because the last time I tried the the video went for like one hour. But yeah, this is just the rough Cliff Notes version. Didn't really talk about them in depth, but uh, hopefully it's in depth enough for you guys. Right, so for new players, right, try to get the regret if you go if you can. The Walpurgis banner is pretty much the banner to pull on every time. Uh, and then for Dimension Shredder, I would recommend waiting for at least uh, the Yisang numbers to drop first before you go and spark for this or pull for this. And then for all of these uh, Egos, they will be coming back in Season 3. So stand by to try to farm up some shards for these guys. These are definitely high performers and you will definitely not regret getting them. And then for all of these here, I would recommend not even getting them unless you want to try some weird strats that uh, I've never seen people do. Right. So that will be it for the summary of the Egos. It's a lot easier than the IDs because the IDs you have to talk a lot about synergies and stuff. But for Egos, honestly, they are like pieces of an ID. So it's really easy to talk about them. Right, so if you have any comments, uh, feel free to leave them. If you have any opinions about maybe some of these things I'm valuing it a bit low or valuing it a bit high, then you can just feel free to say it as well. Then we can just take a look at it later. Right. So that will be it for this video. Hope it helped you guys out. And good luck with your pulls on Walpurgis if you haven't done them yet. And good luck on farming your shards for your future egos. Alright, thank you all for watching and goodbye. Alright, so uh, I forgot about a few of these uh, egos that are also on the battle pass and should be coming back as well. So uh, let me just talk about them now. I don't, I think I've pretty much covered all of them, right? Yeah, I, I think these are pretty much all of the uh, ones that are on the battle pass. I'm not, I don't remember if Rosie Desire is actually on there, but none of them are particularly interesting. So besides that, let's just talk about these four over here because I definitely remember them as season one battle pass egos. So for fourth match flame, She's quite an okay ego nowadays because up type 4 gave her more AoE but AoE stuff. And if you remember, she inflicts Wrath Fragility next turn and she hits in an AoE. So getting this Wrath Fragility onto targets will be very good in the future when we start getting our Liu gang uh, IDs. Right now, I think Liu is the most lacking team comp. We have a little bit of synergy with Liu Ishmael but it's not enough. We need a little bit more boost. We need something to make burn actually do a lot more damage, like a like a debuff that specifically helps burn. Maybe burst burn, maybe uh, increase the amount of damage the burn procs will do. I don't know, but whatever it is, we just kind of need that in order to make burn kind of work because burn is now kind of left in the gutter because Tremor and Rupture Count got quite a lot of stuff in season two. So this 
ego here currently not a super high priority the passive is also nothing to talk about because it is just defeating an enemy that's burn will heal you by the ref absolute resonance of max hp not particularly interesting at all the only interesting parts here is that she has very high aoe's and she will inflict a bunch of ref fragility so that is really really good next let's look at uh, impending day sinclair okay let's do impending day sinclair this is pretty much um, the default ego that you would slap onto your Dinclair no matter what. And the reason why is because that this is a negative coin ego. And if you can kill someone, you can get 15% healing. And it has some pretty good clashing power of 28. So that is really, really good. And we have Dinclair, of course. Back then, we didn't actually have Dinclair, by the way. So uh, what we had to do was always just roll 20s most of the time with regular Sinclair. So it was a bit awkward. If Douglas HP is below 25%, you also do an additional 40% damage, so really makes it into a very good finisher move. And in addition to that, you also get, after defeating an enemy with an attack or counter, you also gain 5 ego resources. This is just a nice bonus, not something that you actually aim for. Back then, we actually thought there would be some strats based on gaining ego resources, but ultimately, it doesn't really happen because it takes quite a few turns. And you also waste some resources here, so it's a bit, uh, a bit hard to get some positive ego resources out of this. And then when you corrode, you will see this most often. You only hit one target, thankfully, so you don't kill your entire team. Lifetimes too, if you put it on your Ninclair and you corrode, you will kill your entire team because it's like a 5 AoE or 3 AoE or something like that. It's crazy. Targets randomly. If targets HP is below 25%, you do additional damage. If you fail to kill, you gain 3 attack power next turn. Now this one's very interesting. And also you gain 10 bleed on yourself, so you're killing yourself. But this 3 attack power up here actually lets you speedrun some boss fights in the game. If you bring Ninclair solo with this impending day ego, you can actually let Ninclair purposely corrode. He will unleash a bunch of impending day with all of his actions. And then he gets about 10 to 12 attack power. I don't remember how much attack power he gets, but he gets a crap ton. And then he will just absolutely destroy Chromer in the story mode. So this is one of the funny memes uh, that I've seen so far with this ego. And this ego is just generally the default one that you slap on your Ninclair. You use it whenever you have a hard time clashing and be too hard, which is very rare still. But sometimes it does happen. Maybe you draw two of your Gloom skills and the Gloom skills have really shitty uh, uh, clashing power. So that could be when you want to pop your impending day. So it's a pretty good ego and I would actually recommend getting it because uh, honestly the others aren't particularly interesting to me at all. Also, uh, Ninclair, I'm pretty sure, just fully funds this because he spams skill 3 and skill 2 most of the time. Right, next, after Impending Day, uh, oh, sorry, I think I shouldn't put them in LOL. Uh, let's put them in like coming back here. Not not particularly uh, anywhere. I think maybe you just slap them around here because they do have some use compared to the others. Sun Shower also has some pretty good value. Maybe I push her up a little bit more. Yeah, something like this. Okay, and then we talk about 4th match Flame Yisang. 4th match flame Yisang. Now that one is an ego that I've just kind of forgotten about. But he actually got quite a few buffs with Uptai 4. Uptai 4 actually gave it, I think, an uh, extra attack weight on its uh, on its attacks. <clears throat> so now you can hit 5 targets and you can roll up to 20 on 5 targets and inflict uh, about 10 burn to all of them. The thing is Yisang doesn't really have any uh, Liu characters yet. He, I think he is, uh, he is going to get one though. Because in one of the arts of the uh, Liu section, there is a Liu is uh, there is a Liu Yi Sang in there. It's just we haven't gotten Liu Yi Sang yet. Uh, yeah, I don't think we got Liu Yi Sang yet, right? Do we? I don't know why, but suddenly I'm I'm thinking that I missed out a Liu Yi Sang. No, 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 I, I did not miss out a Liu Yi Sang. Yeah, he's 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 slated to come. He has an ID already in the works because one of the background arts of the Liu has him there. So he definitely is going to come, and maybe he will have some good uh, synergy with this ego but this ego is really just a 5 AOE apply a crap ton of burn and every time you win a clash you inflict burn so it's a burn potency applier maybe that's what his ID is going to be so for now it's not very uh, priority uh, 5 AOE slash is very nice but it's also not something that you really really need because um, we do have uh, something like red eyes open here for slashing, we also have something like Rodion here for slash AoE. So not something you really, really need, but at the same time, if your Yi is going to go for burn synergy or you just need even more AoE ref slash, some enemies are actually weak to that. So something to consider is you can actually run this. With a 5 AoE, you can just slap that like somewhere like there, just for raw damage. 
And then let's see, who's the last one? Uh, last one is Luisa Gdon. Luisa Gdon is pretty damn uh, good for single target clashing, and I like her in Mirror Dungeon too hard because if you have a enemy that you want to clash with, right? Teleport Dawn sometimes doesn't cut it. But Fluid Sack rolls up to 38 on this coin, so it actually does pretty significant amount of damage. So what this does is that it has an AoE of 3 now with Uptide 4. I'm pretty sure it used to be single target, then they made the AoE. And then you got Burst Tremor, deal SP damage. If target is staggered in low morale or whatever, you deal additional damage. So if you target someone like in the statuses here, you actually can finish them off pretty well. Besides that, the target of the rightmost skill on the dashboard loses SP after the attack. So this one is just a uh, additional SP down on enemies, so that's also really nice. So basically her whole shtick is that she wants to make enemies that have SP uh, drop to low SP so that they will be able to get into these modes over here so that she will do more damage to them. That's the whole point of this, but ultimately it's not very cool to do it because uh, Dawn doesn't really have any character that wants to uh, do this at all. Right, there's no sinking Dawn or anything like that. So this thing is pretty much you can run it with uh, your sinking gang maybe, your Dichi, your uh, Yisang, your uh, one more uh, sink, sink male. You can run with those characters and then you can just use this fully sack Dawn to go and punish the ones that they sank. So I, I, it's, it's, it's okay. It's, it, it has a team now. Nowadays we got sinking teams so actually you can get this to work. But it is not particularly amazing. I, I would say just for raw damage, right? Because attack rate of 3 and 38 is very, very strong. And also, if you are fighting enemies that can drop their SP, this is very, very good as well. But this SP damage here actually is quite worthless against a boss because they just straight up don't have any SP. And against just abnormal fights that have no SP, this is also quite meh. So really, the main one that you'll be looking at is probably this staggered status here which is the main one. So you just try to use this as a very good finisher and you can also just use it as a clash move in general. So it's just a very, very strong one. But you also need to fight with Teleport Dawn for the slot because it's a he ego, right? So it's a bit tricky to choose which one you want to use. So in my opinion, I think Teleport is still better because W Dawn is still one of our strongest uh, IDs. So if you are a F2P player, do not get this one. At least get your Teleport first and then you can consider whether you want to bring your Fluid Sack Dawn or not. Right, so that will place her maybe around here in terms of AUE damage because her coinage is also really high. Your coinage is also really high, maybe you go around here and then you two are just AUE slash moves. Okay, I think I'm quite happy with this list now. So that will be it and I shall see you guys later. Goodbye.